seeing the food insecurity here, it's hard to be, it's hard to see that and not do anything. In the Upper East region of Ghana, food security comes and goes. And for a lot of people, it's a truth that's hard to face and even more difficult to solve. The land is becoming increasingly harder to produce more food. The level of soil degradation is really high and the farmers are kind of at a loss for something to do about it. There's a rainy season for about four months and the rest of the time it's dry and the farming activities are done. Nothing's planted during the dry season. Um, nothing's been planted yet for the new year, so there's just a total shortage of, of food. Because of this, Peace Corps volunteers work together to hold a four-day food security youth camp at the Ghana Institute of Organic Farming in Sirigu. It's a question of do the farmers have food available in the village? Is there food that they can buy? Are they producing enough food? Are they growing enough food? How can we be better stewards of the land? How can we increase the fertility? How can we keep that fertility <coughs> where it is? But also ensure that the Ghanaian eats a quality and a well-balanced diet. The camp brought 10 PCVs and 22 students together to concentrate on how food security can be improved. PCVs and Ghanaian counterparts led sessions on animal rearing, gardens, nutrition, and organic farming. The vision of uh, the long-term impact this camp will have is to start clubs at the schools in the Upper East region. I will ensure I will organize um, all the agri students and even students who are not in the agri department, but they are interested in the club. Following one of the core principles of 4-H, learn by doing, PCVs were able to interactively teach solutions that are appropriate to their region. We're going to do school gardens, and we're actually going to plant a school garden. And so right now we're just digging up the ground, and they're getting ready to build a fence around it, and they're also learning how to nurse seeds. We're teaching kids about how to use soil and compost with a little manure on top and then we're just adding the seeds. To me, that's really great because a lot of these students at school, they just sit in the classroom all day and take notes. They never have practical aspects of learning. At the culmination of the camp, the participating students were able to teach local farmers what they had learned. Like for instance, we have deep rooted crop and shallow rooted crops. So a maize, maize is a, a shallow rooted crop. So it means if you should plant maize on this farm, for this year, they will utilize those uh, nutrients on the surface of the what the soil. When I get back to my hometown, I'll help most of the farmers. I'll try to advise them on the need to listen to students like us who has just attended programs like this. They're going to go back and develop the leadership skills to teach everyone else, all their peers, and hopefully that knowledge stays within the community. Also teaching them that they can do something about it. Like, it's not just something they have to stand by and watch their younger brothers and sisters not have enough food, you know, suffer from malnutrition. That it's something that they themselves can help change. Good afternoon. Uh, after that great video, it is now my uh, real pleasure to introduce our next speaker. Uh, our next speaker is President Obama's nominee to run the Peace Corps, Carrie hessler Radlett. Now, I think many of you know Carrie because she has been uh, running the Peace Corps as the acting director for some time. Uh, and, and when, under Aaron Williams, she has been the deputy director there. Uh, and you all know that the Peace Corps is, and the role of director of the Peace Corps is a sort of iconic job in American politics. It has been for now more than 50 years. And it's because the Peace Corps represents something special about our country, our generosity, our commitment to all those around the world. And I just am curious, how many people in this room are returned Peace Corps volunteers or current active Peace Corps folks? Wow. <laughs> that, uh, that, that surprises me a little bit. Well, I, I want you to know a couple of things about Carrie, which I, I think many of you might already know. The first is, 
that uh, she has had a unique commitment to partnership in this role. And I have watched as she has really transformed the Peace Corps into an institution that is helping to, in a really structured, results-oriented way, field expertise, connect Peace Corps volunteers to programs in health, education, and agriculture, and, and really deliver the kinds of profound results on the ground that was the inspiring spirit that led to the Peace Corps' creation. Carrie's personal background is in health. She was at John Snow International at Harvard at Boston College. Uh, so she knows the health bit, but she really does love the agriculture bit. Uh, and in particular, Feed the Future. And uh, I am really proud of the fact that as an interagency initiative, uh, we now have more than 1,200 Peace Corps volunteers who are dedicated Feed the Future volunteers working, as you saw in that video, on the front lines of ending hunger and extreme poverty. Carrie hessler Radlett. Good afternoon, everyone. It was so wonderful to see all those hands. We like to stock the room. I hear we've been getting a lot of love at this conference. Is that right? Good. <laughs> Thank you, Raj, for that great introduction, and especially for your support of Peace Corps, uh, in a way that I think no other uh, USAID administrator has, has supported us. Uh, you are doing that, and we're very grateful. And we also are very happy about your visionary leadership for Feed the Future. And thank all of you for being here. This is one of the most important issues of our time. As Raj said, although my background's in health, I love agriculture. And I am very hopeful for the future. And I believe that our work is making a difference. And Peace Corps is really proud of that effort, of being part of that effort. Of all the challenges that Peace Corps volunteers face in the course of their service, confrontations with hunger and malnutrition on their very own doorstep are probably the most disconcerting. Because no matter how well you know the facts and figures, and I know all of you know those facts and figures, that one in eight people in the world suffer from chronic hunger, and every 10 seconds we lose another child to malnutrition-related causes, there really is no way to prepare yourself as an American for what it's like to come face to face with hunger. I think about one, what one Peace Corps volunteer wrote after helping a local health worker examine a severely underweight baby in a village in Mali. It was written by a young woman named Eliza Swedenborg, who I met in Minnesota a few months ago, and this is what she wrote. She said, hunger is a child that will not grow. Hunger is protruding bellies that go to bed without enough to eat, and orange hair when peanut stores run out. Hunger is pregnant women, the undersides of their eyelids white, who are likely to hemorrhage to death when the baby is born. Hunger is my neighbor, who wonders if there will be enough to feed her children through the hungry season. What if this were my life, Eliza asked. My hunger, my daily decisions, my child to feed. It could have been my life. It could have been your life. That's the statement that brings so many of us to this conference, to this work, to this profession. It's a statement that drives many Peace Corps volunteers to action, action that we believe can help make a difference. Because for Peace Corps volunteers, this is personal. And I know for many of you, it's also personal. Since the founding of Peace Corps over 50 years ago, a quarter of a million volunteers have served in 139 countries around the globe, working on issues ranging from empowering women and girls to helping rural communities connect with markets and grow their economies to improving food security in a growing world. In 2011, Peace Corps signed a five-year global food security framework agreement with USAID to expand our role and deepen our involvement in global food security. It's one of our largest interagency partnerships to date. 
and we are moving forward with exciting new steps to ensure that our close working relationship continues to deliver solid results. In the words of Stevie Chilcote, a volunteer in Tanzania who you heard from in her dynamic TED talk on Monday, volunteers are uniquely positioned to understand the issues and tailor solutions to the individuals and villages with whom they work. And Feed the Future provides a framework and support for Peace Corps volunteers. All told, over 1,200 Peace Corps volunteers have worked with host country partners in Feed the Future initiatives to end global hunger and poverty, reaching more than 47,000 direct beneficiaries and probably three times that number of indirect beneficiaries in 40 countries around the world. Peace Corps volunteers can take your ideas, your innovations, your projects to the last mile where other development agencies, even host governments, often can't reach. Because our volunteers are members of their communities, living and working side by side as neighbors with members of their community, day in and day out, literally living in the next, in the mud hut next door. We all have a role to play in feeding the future, but I'd like to share a bit about what I see as Peace Corps' unique role how we can add value to this incredible joint effort. I believe that Peace Corps volunteers strengthen Feed the Future in three distinct ways. Number one, we ensure that Feed the F Future initiatives, funded by others, all of you, are implemented properly, owned by the community, monitored and evaluated, and sustained over time. Number two, Peace Corps volunteers can ground truth interventions and support local innovation to improve the effectiveness of your interventions. Number three, Peace Corps is helping to build the next generation of food security experts and advocates, which is so important to ensuring that our country continues to lead in this important issue. So I'd like to address each of these added values and illustrate them with stories from Peace Corps. First, Peace Corps volunteers play an essential role in ensuring that Feed the Future initiatives funded by others are implemented effectively and efficiently. They secure buy-in from community leaders to strengthen sustainability over time. And they can conduct day-to-day -day monitoring and evaluation that provides the information that we all need for data-driven decision-making. Together with local counterparts, volunteers work to forge long-term solutions to chronic food insecurity and undernutrition. From helping mothers to prepare nutritious foods for their children using locally grown products, to teaching and modeling improved agricultural practices and techniques that help farmers preserve the envir environment while increasing crop yields, to training farmers in business management and marketing so they're able to reap the economic benefit of their increased yields. And they can make stick large-scale interventions at the community level. For example, in Senegal, Peace Corps and USAID are working together on a master farmer program that is designed to expand agriculture extension outreach by building the capacity of local farmers to serve as extension workers. Supported by USAID, Peace Corps volunteers train master farmers in a range of key agriculture and agroforestry techniques, along with nutrition, basic principles of business, and data collection. Volunteers then help their master farmers to apply what they have learned to the development of demonstration plots in their own lands. Through these demonstration plots, master farmers share new techniques and seed varieties, offer trusted advice to local farmers, support improved practices, and promote the development of community gardens. They also provide seed, plant materials, and other inputs at low cost to their communities. Another benefit of the program is that the master farmer model promotes and encourages communities to see the value of agriculture as a way to increase income and improve the health status of their family, helping farmers to be proud to call themselves farmers. Since 2010, more than 40 master farmers have been trained and thousands of local farmers have been helped. One of the master farmers in Senegal, Dembo Tigana, worked with Peace Corps volunteers to incorporate trees and shrubs into field crops to prevent soil and wind erosion and improve soil conditions. After discovering, discovering that he was able to produce four times as much corn as usual by using these improved techniques, Demo passed on what he had learned to other farmers. 
He meets with them and invites them to his fields. He has open field days. And he explains techniques and strategies, answers questions of other farmers who want to implement these practices. And then he actually goes out to their farms and helps these farmers. It's a way to make sure that the technical assistance sticks on the ground where it matters most. In addition, we are taking advantage of the extensive experience brought to the table by Peace Corps response volunteers. These are short-term um, assignments by highly skilled individuals. It offers targeted technical assistance in food security. These technical experts are driven by a desire to serve, and they do it a fraction of what it typically costs to deliver technical assistance to the field. For example, in Guatemala, 14 Peace Corps response volunteers are part of Feed the Future. They focus on improving monitoring and evaluation, increasing agriculture production, promoting nutrition education, and supporting other USAID implementing partners at the district level and below. We currently have four Peace Corps response volunteers working to strengthen monitoring and evaluation capacity within SISAM, which is the acronym for the Ministry of Food Security and Nutrition in Guatemala. For example, return, or, um, Peace Corps response volunteer Maureen Herman helps counterparts in SISAN's regional office to standardize the monitoring and evaluation indicators of USAID's implementing partners and all ministries involved in food security. So this is agriculture, education, and health. To ensure that they use common indicators and tabulate all of their information for common reporting to the national level. She's helping to train district health counterparts to improve data quality and strengthen M&E system functioning at the district level where the systems often fail. Maureen's efforts are make it making it possible to more reliably measure food security progress towards results. She and her fellow response volunteers are also providing targeted technical assistance to increase the effectiveness and efficiency of district operations based on the need of each district office. These two examples show how Peace Corps can support and sustain Feed the Future initiatives at the grassroots level. Because volunteers are embedded in their communities, they are able to provide targeted technical assistance based on their community's felt needs. They are able to strengthen monitoring and evaluation, adapt interventions when they need to be adapted, and help all of you implement Feed the Future interventions that achieve your results. Secondly, Peace Corps volunteers specialize in innovation and ground truth. They live Feed the Future projects day in and day out. They see how the community reacts. They see what works and what doesn't. And they have ideas about how simple technology can be applied to development challenges. They see opportunity and act upon it in places where others might not. In the process, they are uniquely positioned to promote gender equality and women's empowerment in agriculture. As an example, Michael Underwood, who is here with us today, is a volunteer in Ghana where he's helping cashew farmers in his community to use mobile technology to boost production and improve their business. By giving local farmers the tools that they need to map their farms and better track sales of cashews, he's enabling them to identify operational efficiencies and ensure fair prices. He walks with farmers along the perimeters of their land with GPS devices to calculate acreage and develop satellite images of their farms. Knowing the acreage is extremely important to these farmers because it enables them to calculate how much pesticide they need. Most farmers I've worked with, Michael says, have no idea how many acres they own which causes overspraying of harmful chemicals. When farmers in his community weren't able to get good prices for, the, for their products, Michael collaborated with a German software company to develop and pilot software, mobile software that tracks origin, price, and quality of cashews from various communities, benefiting both farmers and buyers. With greater transparency across the industry, farmers can charge more for high quality products and buyers can have greater confidence in the value of their purchases. Michael's work has included programming cell phones and training buyers to use them, as well as providing technical information about the cashew industry and testing the application. 
and to reduce food waste across the entire cashew industry, he and his fellow Peace Corps volunteers are encouraging the local community members to process cashew apples from the cashew tree, which was previously discarded. Volunteers help to form women's groups, which are now producing juice and jam from the apples and generating extra income from their sale. They are empowered by their ability to add additional income to their family's budget, and it gives them confidence in themselves. Peace Corps volunteers are able to identify windows of opportunity because they are immersed in their communities. They ground truth what works and help innovate where it doesn't. By the way, Michael, could you stand up just so people know who you are? Here he is. What's more, through our Feed the Future partnership, Peace Corps isn't just making a difference overseas. We're also helping to create the next generation of American food security leaders and advocates. It's not just what, do volu what volunteers do when they're at overseas in service. It's what they do for the rest of their lives. Volunteers return home with the skills and experience that they gained as volunteers. And they remain committed forever to food security and to their countries of service. This is especially true for our Feed the Future volunteers who have experience in agriculture and environment. They know that their life's passion is, is in this area. But it's also true for those volunteers who had no idea that they longed to be a food security expert. I think of people like return volunteer Chris Gorham, who's one of your own, who serves today as a program specialist at USAID in the Bureau for Food Security and is our liaison to USAID. He's a terrific resource and an incredible champion for us all. But he was a political science major when he went into Peace Corps. He studied, he, he studied political science, he had no idea, nothing, he knew nothing about agriculture, but he had all the qualities that we were looking for in a Peace Corps volunteer. He was persistent, he was interested, he's a good listener, and he was willing to do what needed to be done. In his village, Chris, listened to the farmers and worked with them to introduce improved agroforestry practices such as windbreaks, intercropping, and composting. He remembers what it was like to see children with swollen bellies, a number of whom were the youngest in large families who rarely got enough to eat. And he remembers how inspiring and how humbling it was to live and work with people who had so little in a material sense, but who were so willing to give of themselves. And so Chris, in exchange, was willing to give his all in return. Now he's passionate about food security, and he's making development his life's work. Someday he wants to go back to his village in Cameroon, where he served as a volunteer, to see how his work continued. But for now, he's drawing on his field experience in his day-to-day -day work at USAID. If you go to any conference in international development, any public service summit, any other gathering of civic-minded people, you'll find Return Peace Corps volunteers there. They are all passionate advocates for the work that we all love for the rest of their lives. All of you are the reason why I feel so optimistic about food security in the future. I'm hopeful because I believe that by engaging some of our country's best minds and best people at all levels, we can actually make a difference. I'm hopeful because of the opportunity that a whole of government initiative like Feed the Future offers, not only in terms of its resources, but also the creativity and innovation that comes from a partnership that reaches from the smallest villages to the halls of Congress, from the classrooms of our best university to the boardrooms of our largest corporations. And I'm hopeful because progress like this only takes root when people come together in common cause, mobilized by leadership, and energized by grassroots, level, grassroots efforts at a global scale. And Peace Corps is so happy to be part of this effort. And I believe that we have the right bunch of change makers to make a real difference at the last mile and that the future for food security has never been brighter than it is now. And there's no better example of this, of the next generation of food security leaders, than those who are gonna participate in the next panel. A panel which includes, I'm very proud to say, 
Ryan King, who has traveled here from Ethiopia. He's a Peace Corps volunteer there, and you're going to hear from him in a moment, as well as a, a several other incredibly inspired young leaders of food security. So I hope you all sit around, uh, stick around and listen to them. But for now, I'd like to say thank you to all of you for your support, for your partnership, and for all you do to support our Peace Corps programs on the ground. Thank you.